Hello everyone, I'm Lord Midas and welcome back to the Empire of Carpathia where we're doing a lot of holy wars against our pagan neighbors to bring them to the true iconoclast faith. So in the last episode we declared a lot of holy wars and won a lot of them but still we have quite a few to do in this episode. Also we are pressing a claim down here in Epirus so one of our stacks is down here whereas the other stack is up north over here where we are going to go against uh, cargo pole in just a few more minutes. But we were uh, facing some FPS issues, which is why we had to do a lot of cutting in the last episode. And I think we, we will have to do that also in this one, because when I resume the game, the game is just really, really slow because of all of these armies that have been raised simultaneously. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to split this stack into two smaller stacks of, let's say, 5,000 each because this will reinforce over time and become bigger. And this way we suffer less attrition and also we can uh, be more efficient in terms of winning the wars. Similarly down here, I'm not going to keep this huge 15k stack, it's just unnecessary. I think we're going to start splitting them into smaller stacks and uh, send them on different, different wars basically. And this way we can uh, finish these wars before these people start to gain up on the negative war score here. We're already going into like 25 and negative 26 etc. Alright, so we're going to continue that, and as soon as I have another event, another important event, let's say, or as soon as we're ready to enforce demands, I will uh, let you know. Okay, so we have just received a notification that an enemy is planning to invade us, and this is King Yedvard of Verend, and he will invade us in a couple of years. He still follows the old Germanic um, religion, not the reformed one, and he is over here. Varian, so he's actually pretty. Uh, he's a pretty sizable realm, uh, but I think we will be able to take care of his invasion whenever it happens. Yeah, we're not that weak, so we'll see how that how that goes. In the meantime, I've also done a little bit of a rearrangement of uh, titles in our realm, especially the new titles that we won. So I've given the titles over here in the Dior Kingdom of Chernigov to my son. Ilya, and now I've made him the High Chief of Riazan here, I've given him quite some territory, and I plan on making him the King of Chernigov eventually. And over here, we already had my brother, Voislav, who was ruling the um, High Chiefdom of uh, Rostov, and I've also given him the High Chiefdom of Vladimir, and I will make him the King of uh, the Dior Kingdom of Vladimir over here. This way we have a nice uh, couple of kingdoms going on in our dynasty. And hopefully they are strong enough that they can also help to expand to the east. Alright, so let's go ahead with this war here. And down here I've already split my stacks into a couple of stacks. And hopefully the war with war with Epirus will not take very long to finish. Arcarios Vutil has contacted, has contacted me, asking if I have any interest in learning more about roses. And since we are a gardener, we are always very interested in learning more about roses. So let's go ahead and send him some samples that we've been working on. It seems that brother Vutil has received the sample from my garden that I sent him. Today a courier presented me with some elaborate coal sketches of the various rose species Vutil has been occupying himself with. Included are ideas of new ones provided we continue to work together. I am happy to help. We do God's work and uh, we get a, get, a, get a modifier for plus two learning. Pretty good. My lord, there is a noble warrior at the gate. He says he's a veteran of many battles and desires to become a champion of your house. He praises your wisdom and honor and pledges to always defend you and your household if you will accept him in your retinue. Let's go ahead and accept him. Maybe he's a nice uh, commander that we can use. This is Sviaroslav of Karvuna. He's strong and skilled tactician. Pretty good martial score there, so maybe we can go ahead and use him as a commander and some of our armies over here. And we are ready to enforce demands against High Chief Yadne of Kargopol over here for the Holy War for Kargopol. Let's go ahead and do that. And now we can use this stack over here, which is around 3k troops, I think, to, to push forward into this um, Sumenusko territory over here. Let me just quickly check if they have uh, not too many troops. This guy has about 3,000. So I've, I've sent one stack over here to fight against this uh, 
Tangri people. I think this stack could reinforce a little bit first. Stand here and maybe reinforce because we've got a good amount of supply here. And then once it's a little bit powerful enough, we can send it over to the Suminusco territory. And finally, we have 100% war score against Queen Georgia of Epirus. So apparently the king has died. He died of great pox just before looking himself to uh, be, being defeated. And he, uh, he converted to Catholic. I did not see that earlier. I thought he was still Slavic. All right, but apparently he did convert to Catholic, but that's all right for us because we are pressing a claim war, not a holy war. So our war will go through. And there it is. Let's enforce demands. And now we have the entire kingdom of Epirus under our control. Very nice. Mislav Mislavich, whose claim we pressed, is now known as the Usurper. He has this uh, chieftain of Ladoga here, but we will revoke that from him eventually. Can we just ask to revoke it uh, right now? No, we can't. Because his capital is in there, in, in there. all right. Okay, now it's time to move these stacks. Um, I think I'm going to send this uh, bigger stack towards Poland. Take care of these wars over here. Let's start off with the territory that we are pressing our claim for. And then the other stack can go toward, to the east towards Karadaku. Also, maybe take care of this uh, county over here on the way. Steward Eonakios, Eonakios has some interesting ideas on how to improve the economy. Let's adopt his ideas. All right, so the Kingdom of Lombardy apparently seems to be getting quite some land under them in Dior territory. So after 100 years under the Kingdom of Lombardy, the Grand Principality of Ancona is no longer considered a Dior part of the Papal States. And that is... Um, this one? Your territory, yeah. So now the papal states are even smaller. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> the the kingdom of papal states is losing land to Lombardy quite fast. And I think they're also going to lose this territory over here because that's also part of the uh, kingdom of Lombardy right now. 89 years already. So in just 11 more years, they will also lose this land. And then the papal states will be just this much. All right. And look at that. Queen Hisela of Epirus has inherited Kingdom of Epirus and other titles from King Mislav the Usurper. So he died just a few months after we pressed his claim. So we were really lucky with that, that we finished the war fast enough that before he died. Let's quickly check how fast was it. So he conquered it in on the 21st of November last year. And currently it's February. So just in a couple of months, he died and then the Queen has inherited. And wow! Okay, she is married to King Vishata of Ruthenia, our vassal over here. And this basically means that their son now is the king uh, is going to be heir to both the kingdoms, right? I would expect that. No. Ignatic Gavelkind and Oh, because the king of uh, Ruthenia has many children and not all of them are from uh, this wife. So then his her son will get the kingdom of Epirus, whereas his son will get the kingdom of Ruthenia. So the realm will stay split apart for now at least. All right, I'm fine with that. There's uh, less internal border gore for me to deal with. It's okay. Our court chaplain reports that his mission to Novogrodek is has been successful over here. So the heretics over there have been converted. And the heretics in our capital is still going strong, even though the ecumenical patriarch sent some help. So I'm going to say excellent to that and put my court chaplain back in Novogrod. Try to convert these monothelite her heretics back to the real faith. And over here I'm having some trouble now. So I was sieging this territory and I was not aware that there's like a 4k stack waiting for me over here. Um, and they're going to try to attack me now and... Some people from over here are also going to join that battle. So my stack over here might get defeated, which will give this person quite a high war score against me. Yeah, this tends to happen to me when I split up troops, doesn't it? So I've got some troops over here and some over here. And if they were together, we would have fared much better. But uh, we might lose this holy war over here now because of that. Because I think they're already sitting at like 40% 40, 40 war score. Negative 40%. 
Yeah, can we offer a white piece? He won't accept. Okay. So we kind of messed up a little bit in terms of uh, splitting up the troops. How is the war score over here? Definitely not gonna accept, I think, because this land over here is not occupied by us. It's occupied by the High Chiefdom of Cargopol. And this is the one that we are pressing for, I believe. Let me just quickly check again. Holy War for Cargopol, yeah, so over here. This, this uh, little one county over here. Yeah, this is not going very good for us, is it? So he has ticking war score because I don't own that territory. I think I'm going to siege this territory and then immediately kill that army and then go back here and try to siege that and maybe that gives me enough war score. But over here, hmm, that's a bit of a problem. Should we hire some mercenaries? We have a lot of gold. I can quickly hire some mercenaries, send them over here and uh, basically assault these holdings to get some war score back from them. I think we might have to do that. Because by the time this army gets over here, the war score will already be at negative 100%. I'm going to wait and see how much war score this battle gives them. And if it's already 100%, then we don't have a choice. And if it's not, then I'm going to hire some retinues, uh, some mercenaries and send them over here. Let's see that. All right, right in the middle of that battle, our daughter, Malfrida, has finished her education in diplomacy. I notice with pride that she has attained nothing less than a masterful level of knowledge. She becomes a grey eminence. And we will find for her a nice match very soon and make some alliance like that and possibly call those people to war as well. We will see about that. And the battle over here is probably not going to go in our favor, is it? Yeah, we are losing. At least this flank and also this flank appears to be losing. I mean, they have... And also this army is going to join over there. I think we have no chance. And plus this is pagan territory, so they might be getting some bonuses in there. I might have to retreat this army. So I'm going to resume the game a little bit and show you how the FPS situation is right now. And you can see it's not that bad, but it's still bad. Alright, I'm going to retreat. I don't want to fight this battle. Irmin Sul destroyed. As the bitter war in Saxony rages on, the armies of Duke Udalrich II of Hesse have captured Paderborn, the site of the great shrine of the holy tree of Irmin Sul. <clears throat> By order of the conquering duke, the troops burned the holy tree and then proceeded to destroy the entire shrine. This has infuriated people of the Germanic religion everywhere. So this guy... Ulrich of Hesse has pro probably got some land in Saxony. Over here. And he has gone ahead and destroyed some holy site of the Germanic people. Or some, let's say, a holy shrine, at least. Gloria in Excelsis Dio. So we definitely approve of that because we're Christians, but Germanic people are angry. Let's see what they will do to exact their revenge against us. Alright, let's see the war score once this is over. Uh, pretty good. Just negative 43%. And my army is apparently going in this direction, even though I asked them to go down here for retreating. I think they like to retreat into their own uh, territory. So this is some land that we own. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hire some mercenaries, I think, to finish this war fast. So, uh, whoa, 600, not going to hire that. 3,600 troops. Mostly just cavalry. Or should we hire this heavy infantry one? They're a bit more expensive. The monthly cost is basically the same. I think we're going to hire this one. And combine them with this army and send them north to... Uh, 
get some war score against these people. Look at that. They are going all the way down here to retreat. Okay. Pretty stupid of them, isn't it? It's gonna waste my time uh, while I've hired the mercenaries and paying their costs. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start moving this stack over here then, and this stack can go over there. As soon as they're done, done sieging. Rodislav Milanovic, our son, our eldest son, and heir to the Empire of Carpathia, is ready for his education. Let's see what he's made of himself. He has made himself quite fussy. So he won't make a decent diplomat, even though he's quite talented in that, apparently. And he's haughty, so won't even do good for a stewardship education. Okay. In that case, maybe we can put him... Even though he's fussy, still put him into a diplomatic education, because his score will be nice, even though even if he gets a rather low-ish... Uh, score in terms of the trait, but his overall score might be good. So let's still put him in diplomatic education. And I'm still gonna send these mercenaries north, uh, at least finish this war over here, while this army can come back. And over here we are almost done with this war, and we have finally sieged some land in Praha. And uh, yeah, hopefully we will win against Poland also pretty soon. Alright, so we have 100% war score against High Chief Stanislav, the short-tempered of Tversians over here. So let's go ahead and enforce demands over there. And then we can move this stack over here into Rov, finish that war, and then go to Kardaku. I crave solitude. I no longer seek the company of others. But I won't become a hermit, even though we will lose the gregarious trait. Alright, we're starting to lose some traits now. And I think we no longer have the seven virtues on this character anymore. We lost the chaste trait as well. Even though we are celibate. <laughs> yeah. Alright, but still pretty good character overall. Seduction in the wild. At a festive outing in the wild, I found a message left amidst wildflowers addressed to my concubine, Danute. The would-be lover, Lord Mayor Gizulf, is waiting for her by the stream near the camp. Who is this guy? Some mare down here in Noli wants to seduce one of my concubines all the way over here in Novgorod. That tells you just how special my concubines are. They are famous all around the realm. So some mare down here wants to Seduce my concubine. Alright, I must protect Danute from such dangerous liaisons. We should uh, imprison him, in fact. And I think the FPS is kind of playable-ish. Not that good, but it's getting there, slowly. So very soon we will have to... We will be able to stop this uh, cutting business. Alright, the Byzantine Emperor, the child, is really, really very insistent, it seems, in marrying the Princess Apollonia to this old guy, Sande Abgwen, who is almost about to die. He's a lunatic, has great pox, he's 59 years old. I'm still gonna continue to decline it. Apparently this guy is the lunatic over here if he's trying to, if he's trying to get that marriage done. I don't know what, what benefit he sees in that. Apparently some kind of thing is going on here that only he knows. Or maybe he's just playing a game, you know, as a child. We will decline it. And then another marriage proposal from the King of Lombardy. This time for his brother, for some courtier in our court. Uliana Izyaslavovna. Yeah, we, were gonna, we will accept that. She is heir to the Grand Principality of Pax. Oh, because her mother is the usurper of Pax over here. Oh, so he wants uh, somehow to get that thing going on. Nope, I'm going to decline that. Not interested in him getting more powerful like that. Though of somewhat dubious provenance, High Chief Damid of Yatvingia has presented me with evidence that Chief Izyaslav of Paramissal is plotting treason against me. How should I respond to this? This is my friend, Chief Izyaslav of Paramissal, down here. And since he's my friend... We are going to 
keep this information to myself. I don't want to go against my friends because we are pretty good like that. Oh, that girl over there who he's always trying to get married is actually the heir to the Byzantine Empire right now. And can we get this guy killed? Maybe. Maybe we can get our heir married to her. He's always trying to get her married. So will he accept if I suggest something like this, for example? No. Now he would prefer a matrilineal marriage. Okay. So maybe he... The reason he was trying to get this girl married is because he wants to remove her by making her not able to produce children because he's young and he knows that he will produce heirs of his own when he grows up. So he's just trying to get her removed from the equation like that. Okay, but that, I, will, I will keep her as a person of special interest. We might uh, be interested in getting her married to one of our children or at least some of our dynasty members eventually to get the Byzantine Empire under our dynasty as well. And the other important thing is that over here we have sieged his territory. So High Chief Lev of Turov should now surrender to us like that. And that's another war done. And then... Oh, that's a huge stack of Karadaku over here. And with that, we are still fine-ish, I think. I'm going to merge these stacks to the west and finish these wars against Poland and Pomerania first and then go back to Karadaku with a huge stack because we will need all that uh, power when we go against them. Let's send this stack like this. And our mercenaries have done some really good work here. They took a lot of money from us, so... Basically, a half of our total wealth has already been spent. Just trying to maintain them. But they have won our war over here against... Carpathian Holy War for Karelia against Chief Ama of Sortavala. So let's enforce those demands as well. That puts us over a domain limit. We were going to fix that pretty soon. But... My army is also pretty much here. So I'm going to combine them and attack this stack over here. Finish this war. And then I'm going to dismiss the uh, mercenaries. Alright, the theologians dispatched to Novgorod by the ecumenical patriarch are returning home with their tails between their legs. I thought they were supposed to be good, so they did not succeed in converting these heretics. So maybe our patriarch will have a better time. He has, he has had some experience over here in Novogrodek converting those heretics. Let's see how he performs in our capital then. That's also the place that his uh, capital... Um, temple is from. He's the bishop down here. There are many legends about the great man whose blood I share. A particular story has been circulating at court lately. lately. It focuses on an epic feat where Rodislav proved his, proves his strength of character. The more I hear, the more I wish to emulate him. That's our father, Saint Rodislav the Apostle of Carpathia, and definitely we share his blood. And we can try to become more like him. So we can, uh, let's say, strive to become more like him and we become gregarious again. And we also get a modifier emulating a legend, which gives us an extra plus five to vassal opinion for five years. That's pretty good. No, I make my own fit. No, I'm going to try to get that because being gregarious is very nice. We lost that trade recently, but trying to emulate our father again, we can try to be more like him. That's what we've been trying to do all our life trying to follow our father as much as possible. It's pretty good to see that uh, our character is also trying to do that on his own. Young Rodislav loves doing things his own way because he's fussy and often takes it personally and gets angry when others offer opinions. I should help guide, guide him in the right direction or he's a busy soul just like me and he becomes paranoid. We can try to make, make him diligent, which would be very nice because uh, we are diligent. I believe so. Yes. And let's see what happened. He still became paranoid. Okay. Paranoid is still not a bad trade. It uh, increases his intrigue. And negative on diplomacy is not bad because uh, he, he's already pretty high on that. I'm okay with that trait. And can we already teach him some virtue? Pretty good. Let's do that. Rodislav listened to me carefully as I explained to him how to be more virtuous. And he's become diligent. 
All right, perfect. So we had another talk, let's say, and this time he uh, kind of understood us, and he seems to have come out of our discussion a better man. Excellent, and he has gained the diligent trait. I like that. All right, so we won our war, uh, our battle over here, which means we can go ahead and dismiss the mercenaries at least, stop paying them money, and our own ladies should be able to go ahead and siege these territories and win the war for us. No. And over here, the problem has been, it's a bit annoying, you know, that I did go ahead and siege some of the territory over here, but I could not siege this territory, nor could I siege this territory. And this is the one that I'm pressing the, the Holy War for. And I could not siege it because somebody has already occupied it. This is the High Chiefdom of Cargopole, who is somehow at war with this guy, and they have sieged that territory. So I, I have to then wait until they win their war before I can go ahead and siege that territory. And, and until I siege it, my war score is kind of stuck at um, 12%. So we have to wait about that, which is a bit annoying. But over here in Poland, we are doing good. We are at 16%, and I think soon I'm going to uh, defeat some of their armies and go ahead and, and siege their territory and win that war. But in the other wars, I'm already starting to go into the negative 50s now at some points, which is uh, dangerous because the more we delay it, the higher that uh, negative war score goes. So we have to now speed up quite fast and uh, try to win these wars as fast as possible. All right, so there it is. To the narrow-minded fanatic Milan. Your low character is the subject of Greek plays. This is a formal declaration of war. Our armies shall meet, meet on the field of battle. And this is the King Yedvar, the scholar of Verend, who was planning um, an invasion against us, prepared invasion. And now he's going to come. So we might have to deal with that as well. He is currently sitting at 8.8k, so that's 5k event-spawned troops. And then including his vassals, etc., he might have about 10k, let's say, at max. So we might have to use this stack over here to take care of him. We will do that. I think we might be able to survive it pretty easily. Money continues to flow through the trade post in Padua, but your relationship with the merchant family that owns it has soured. To teach them a lesson without going to war, you could arrange for a mob to burn it down. We do need the gold. Yeah, let's assemble the mob and try to burn down the trade post and seize their stuff. We're not honest anymore, you know. Even though we are like kind, charitable, humble and patient, but we're not honest, you know. So let's assemble the mob, we need the money. We spent a lot on the mercenaries. And we will use that uh, gold for the good of the faith anyway, so it's good. The mob you gathered successfully stormed the trade post and burned it to the ground. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. We gain just prestige, not gold anymore. And he hates us a little bit. Wonderful news! The king of Poland has been captured. And he is imprisoned by one of our vassals, High Chief Yevstafia the Tormentor. Perfect uh, timing, because now we can go ahead and declare the war finished immediately without having to spend more time on it. So let's enforce demands. And our vassal, High Chief Petro of Bohemia, who is a Slavic pagan, has usurped the title High Chiefdom of Bohemia. And now we only need two more counties in Bohemia, which is currently part of France, which we will get in the future at some point. But now let's use this stack while it's still here to win also this war against uh, Pomerania. Alright, this is the second time, I think. My wife, Bertrude, has been really letting, go letting herself go as of late. What was once a gr graceful and delicate woman has slowly become an undignified and hefty glutton, only excited about her next great feast, even though we wrote a book about her and called it the Be To The Beautiful Bertrude. Alright, I need to warn her as politely as I can, try to get her out of her eating habits. And now she's put on a hard diet and she's lost the fat trait. Perfect. It's the second time we've uh, had to tell her to fix that a little bit, you know? These are dark days. My wife, Tsaritsa Bertrude, has been beset by a high fever for several days, and I have just been informed that her affliction is indeed slow fever. Negative three health. And she's already been put on a hard diet. That gives, us extra, that gives her actually some extra health. 
and she's strong. So she might actually be able to survive this. Call for my court physician at once. We should try to get her treated as fast as possible. And I was relieved to see that my words did not go unheard. Better Truth thanked me for my concern and promised me that she would start dieting immediately. Well, we already know that. A wise choice. I'm more interested in the uh, court physician thing. The King of Bulgaria has created uh, Grand Principality, so some duchy title, I think. And she has been treated successfully. Our court physician is doing his job. That's pretty good to see. And now the FPS is tolerable, I think, but still not good enough that I uh, I would like to continue it in the video. I think with a couple of more wars finished, it should be much, much better. I have received a letter from my fellow member fellow member of the community of St. Basil, Ipek. Dear Brother Milan, will you, as the Christian scholar you, that you are, please offer me some advice on my poetry or the attempt of it? Reading through the attached documents, there are sim multiple verses all in honor of God, and let's, she's 70 years old and she's writing poetry. So good of her. She's also severely ill with flu. She might not even survive. She's a nun. Yeah, so she might, she might not even survive to hear our reply, but we will try. I'm missing the more comforting aspects of faith. Let's just tell her that. And a mission from our community. We have a new leader. No, the he is, what? Methodius. Yeah, his name is Methodius, but he is... What is his rank in the community? Oh, he's the, he's the leader, Megaluschemus. Okay. The hectic life of a ruler rarely allows for sufficient time for contemplation. I ask of you to seclude yourself and think about your life and your actions, a sort of penance for your sins. Definitely going to accept that. And also start the penance straight away. God shall be my companion. Yeah, I'm not uh, very confident if we're going to win this battle. Because pagans get some bonuses to defense in their territory. But if we win it, we, it will be a very good one. We lost a lot of people to attrition. So the problem is, even though my army does not die, I think it's my uh, tribal vassal's army, which keeps suffering attrition in these territory. Because they don't have that technology which removes the pagan home homeland attrition, I think. That's what's going on here. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Let's see how this battle goes. I'm going to resume it without cutting. Let's have a look at the battle. Alright, my liege, I am pleased to report that your end subject, Domavuj of Novgorod, has been converted to the iconoclast faith. Praise the Lord. Seems to be going good so far. I was beginning to think that Ipek took offense to my comments, but she worked harder on it, and I think the community of St. Basil will treasure these words. Yeah, in the better times, I would have liked to publish her works. You know, just for the fun of it, because she's 70 years old, she put a lot of effort in it. You know what, let's just go ahead and do it. Yeah, let's let's just do it. I mean, I, I would like to do that, so... Give her some satisfaction just before she dies in her old age, that she published her poetry. Brilliant work, and the world needs to see it. We will spend 55 gold, that's a hefty amount of sum. Yeah, let's just make her feel better. Hope she likes it. I think we will win that battle. Perfect. And that gives 85%. So let's put this army over here. And down here. Can we assault it? I think we are going to assault it. We are going to assault the next one as well. And that puts us at 73% against uh, Pomerania. So... Let's siege their other territory and get to 100%. Oh, 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 look at that. I cannot believe that you went against my wishes. Ipek Bratslavich writes to me. The poems were far from finished, and now I receive word that my metaphors could use work? I have been humiliated. I put the letter away frowning. What? Ipek would understand me in time, and she hates us? You cannot fault a man for seizing an opportunity. We did publish her work when after she had improved it. I don't know what happened. Why is she saying that we are telling her that the metaphors could use work? We already told her that. Yeah, I tried to make her feel better by publishing her work and she hates me. Wow. Yeah. 
All right, and I think the, uh, the episode has stretched a little bit uh, over the limit over here. So we're doing pretty good, and I think the FPS is also getting better now. With a couple of more wars finished, we will stop cutting them. And um, yeah, we will finish the rest of the wars in the next episode then. So thank you very much for joining me for this episode. We are doing pretty good, and we are very close now to our Slavic Union achievement, even though we still need this land over here in Poland and Bohemia. So that's that's already, all, only going to be the most difficult part, or let's say the most tedious part that we have to look for in the future then. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please click thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for future content, and let me know in the comments if you have any feedback about the playthrough. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.